तो मैं आराम से ज्वाइन कर लो तो नहीं यस सर टिक के प्रॉब्लम थे ला अच्छा अच्छा हम्म हम्म जी होस्ट था है ताकू रहेबे को पड़ीबो ना जदी ऑटोमेटिक अलाउ कर दी थी बे ताले अलाउड ही जीवो हम्म से कोडे होले हमरो आरती कोडे होले से ज्वाइन नहीं पर ना थी सर हेडा तो मैसेज कर छन दे ना आई हम्म हम्म अच्छा ये अजित सर थिले से कोई था मु तो होस्ट नुह ना मैंने ये लिंक रसुविधा हो टे वेट करवा आसीगले ना समस्ते हाँ बार जन आसीगले हाउ टोटल सो आम वो पढ़ी हुआ कोई नहीं छोटा हम्म अमर कितने ब्लॉग से जानी जो इतने वन 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 जीरो रे कितने चार्टा चार्टा ब्लॉग अच्छे हाँ से ब्लॉग बुला को कौन कौन कुआं तो फर्स्ट हो चाहिए टेलर टू सिटीज हम्म तब रे the mayor of castle beach हम्म आओ तब रे से third टा Victorian poetry one हम्म Victorian poetry two okay हम्म हम्म आओ आओ so we have four blocks in this particular paper paper code 110 that is british uh, literature 19th century hmm. <clears throat> so here in the first one we will talk about the tale of two cities hmm. okay <clears throat> a tale of two cities is written by written by Dickens, okay, and uh, Charles Dickens, Dickens is one of the most important uh, novelists of this era, hmm. of the nineteenth century. All right, and uh, Charles Dickens was much more influenced by this industrial revolution, and he had some egalitarian principles in in his works. Hmm. Egalitarian means what? Of democratic values or democratic nature. That is egalitarian in nature, hmm. and and you will find out that a tale of two cities is also uh, that kind of an of a work which has been inspired by or which has been influenced by the industrial revolution. Okay, like like Charles Dickens' Great Expectations, hmm. like Charles Dickens' Hard Times, right? Hard Times is also a work which has been influenced by this industrial revolution. Okay, so Industrial Revolution, French Revolution, American Revolution. These are some of the most important events that actually uh, influenced the literature of the nineteenth century in general. Hmm. Literature of the nineteenth century in general, both British uh, British Romantic literature and also British Victorian literature. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, so far as this particular. Uh, Work is concerned. This is divided into uh, three books. By the way, book one begins with a chapter that specifies the historical period in the last quarter of the 18th century, and the settings are England and France. So, in both these places, uh, this the settings of the novel have been uh, have been uh, foregrounded. Okay, so we have England and France because France is that place where uh, mass protest broke out against industrial revolution. and france was the first country which was affected by industrial revolution and uh, and later on uh, from france to different neighboring countries like england germany uh, this french revolution uh, spread out all right so the narrative begins with the dangerous journey of mr jarvis lorry an english banker from england to paris is this your first year or second year i don't know second year sir 
second year. Okay, second so you years. have so you have a historical literary backgrounds of these ages, right? You don't have any issues, right? Do you? Sir, for me, yes, of course, because there were no classes in, in first year. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, so it was swept away by COVID-19, I think. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So you, uh -huh. because since this is a kind of correspondence course, hmm, so you do not have a face-to-face -face communication. That's why uh, you may not have that solid background, like a face-to-face -face, uh, mode of communication. Yeah. Okay, so we need to, I mean, <laughs> manage this, right, because we are given a limited time to cover up all these things. Hmm. And we are not able to deal with all these things in a detailed way, as we might have been uh, able to do uh, through a kind of face-to-face -face mode of communication classes, right? Okay, no issues. So the narrative begins with the dangerous journey of Mr. Jarvis Laurie. So Mr. Jarvis Laurie is the <clears throat> Mr. Jarvis Laurie is the protagonist of protagonist of this particular uh, novel here. And you see, who is the protagonist, by the way? Protagonist, Mr. Jarvis Laurie. Main character. main character. Yes, main character. Okay, good. So we have some main characters and we have some side characters. Side characters. And we have also one character that is focused. Okay. Focused by the director, focused by the script writer, focused by everybody almost. Huh. That important character is the protagonist, who is a man, main character. Maybe the main character is a hero or a heroine or an anti-hero, right? So who is a hero, by the way? Hero Koile. Divana movie, the kid, Sharu Khandra. Puruna movie. Baji or the kid? Baji or came the character to play Korichi, Sharu Khan. Anti. Ha, anti hero. That is anti hero. Bujila. Our normal hero, you would have to set up all game. And you have a villain. So, anti hero is a character who is in between a hero and a villain. So he is not purely villain. He is not purely hero. So he is in the midway between both these characters, hero and villain. Okay. All right. So far as this characterization is concerned. Okay. So far as this characterization is concerned, you have two techniques showing and telling. Okay, so there is, uh, there are two uh, methods of characterization. First one is showing, the second one is telling. Okay, showing means what? You are an author, right? You would project different characters. So you try to show different aspects of characters, right? Through different events, through different situations, through different interactions, right? One aspect is showing. Show the character in that light so that that characteristic of that character will be perceivable or observable by the audience, one, or by the readers. Hmm. Second one is telling. So the other characters will tell something about that character which you are dealing with, for example, main character. So main character, or the characteristics of the main character will be decided on the basis of what other characters tell about that main character. So two methods or two approaches to characterization. Okay. One is showing, the second one is telling. All right. And this has been devised, devised by E.M. 
Foster. Niem Foster. Niem Foster has talked about these techniques. Hmm. Showing and telling. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So here we have the main character that is Mr. Jarvis Lowry. Mr. Jarvis Lowry is the main character and he is an English banker. Okay. Right. He is an English banker. So he belongs to a rich class, by the way, because the class is quite important here. Since this is inspired by, Clinton. yes, since this is inspired by industrial revolution, that is why we have a class struggle here, rich versus poor. Hmm, that's why this class is quite important while talking about this. We will also discuss about Marxism and how Marxism plays an important role in, uh, in checking the atrocities caused by industrial revolution. Okay. All right. So, so here we have Mr. Jarvis Laurie, who is an English banker and also uh, from England to Paris he is accompanied by a young girl that is Lucy Manet. Hmm. The name of uh, the, another character is Lucy Manet. Hmm. Lucy Manet. All right. And she is a very young lady. And this Mr. Jarvis Laurie and Lucy Manet, uh, they have been traveling from England to Paris, hmm, from England to France. So in Paris, they meet her father, whom she has never seen before. So in Paris, both of these people, I mean, Mr. Jarvis Laurie and we have Lucy Manet, they meet Lucy's father. Hmm. So the spelling of Lucy may be this one, hmm. this one, eh? not the first one, Lucy Manet. Hmm. Okay, so Lucy Manet meets her own father, whom she has never seen before, Dr. Edward Manet. Hmm. Dr. Edward Manet. Okay, so we have Dr. Edward Manet, who is Lucy's father. And Lucy has not seen before this man. Huh. All right. This is quite uh, interesting, right? A prisoner of the Bastille now released after 18 years of solitary confinement. So Dr. Edward Manet was a prisoner. Hmm. And he has so, been released. What meant by solitary confinement? Yeah. Solitary confinement means those who used to uh, do harsh kind of crimes. They used to be in solitary confinement, in jails. Hmm. Within prisons, we have different cells for these uh, important criminals, okay, who are quite heinous in nature. Those are confined in solitary confinements because they are quite uh, wild in nature. That's why. So that they may not be able to uh, harm any other prisoner. That's why. Hmm. So in Paris, they meet her father and Dr. Edward Manet has been released just after 18 years of solitary confinement in prison. Okay. So he was kept hidden in a loft over the wine shop of the Defarges. And Manet is withdrawn and confused and clings to his cobbler's bench and tools, which had given him a solace in prison. So he is gently persuaded to return to England with them. All right. So this is about book one. Hmm. So far as book two is concerned, you see the title of this book two is The Golden Threat. Hmm. Why Devasmita has left the meeting, by the way? Probably this, uh, this is not interesting, I think. This novel is not interesting. Okay. So we have book two, that is The Golden Thread. The name of this book two is The Golden Thread. All right. She has again joined. All right. Welcome back, Devasmita. So the events narrated in this section cover a period of approximately nine years. Hmm. In between, we have nine years. Hmm. And then the narrative begins at the point of five years after the release of Dr. Manet and ends with the onset of the revolution and Charles Darnay's return to France soon after that. Hmm. And the greater part of the 24 chapters, <clears throat> you see here in the Soho district. And these chapters tell us of Dr. Manet's slow recovery. Hmm. Lucy Manet's courtship uh, by three men, her acceptance of Charles Darnay, and the happiness of this tranquil family setup. So 
uh, I mean, all of these things uh, have been described in book two. But the sec account is interrupted every now and then by chapters set in France, which remind us of the growing discontent of the poor and the threat of revolution in that country. And these chapters tell us of the sins of the aristocracy, especially of the attitude and actions of Marquis uh, de Evremond, hmm. uncle of Charles Darnay, hmm. his mother and the consequences of the act. Thus book two both provides a contrast between the home, that is the England, I mean England, not the England, England, and the nation, the events in France. Hmm. England as a nation, and also we have the events that took place in France. So we have two things, uh, or two cities. First one is England as the home and France as the foreign land. So these events take place both in England and France. That is why the very title of this particular novel is A Tale of Two Cities hmm, by Charles Dickens. Hmm. All right. Hmm. So, uh, so uh, here Dickens wishes to convey a sense of inexorability or doom in the progress of events in both the stories. And book three, we have also book three that is set entirely in revolutionary France and gives us vivid and entirely negative pictures of French mob, such as their frenzied dances, their travesty trials, and also their bloodthirsty killings their spying and plotting and their avid enjoyment of the spectacle of the guillotine. Uh, mm. In book three, Dickens reinforces the pattern of violence and counter-violence, turning them into an almost autonomous process, as if Sir, destined. Hmm. Guillotine means? Yeah, the so spectacle of the guillotine is a, is a phenomenon that took place during the uh, French Revolution. Okay. All right. And in book three, Dickens reinforces the pattern of violence and counter violence, turning them into an almost uh, autonomous process as if destined by some impersonal fate, hmm. rather than by human agents, by the way. I mean, this particular uh, novel, that is the A Tale of Two Cities, is also being influenced by the Greek concept of the fate, because the fate is also one of the important aspects of Greek uh, works, normally in Greek tragedies. Hmm. So this particular incident uh, or this incidents that have been described in this particular book have been uh, more affected by the fate. So these are fateful and not uh, predecided by human agents in a way. Hmm. And we also note how Dickens resolves the triangular love plot by arranging the sacrificial death of Carton uh, at the uh, bulletin. And the novel ends with uh, his optimistic vision of the future later on and his famous words of farewell. So this is a very short uh, summary of these three books, by the way. Hmm. Move on, move, move, moving on to Charles Dickens' life and works, Charles Dickens was born in 1812 uh, at Portsea, England, and his father was a naval uh, pay clerk who was Im improvident and frequently in debt, by the way. And when Dickens was 11, family circumstances forced him to leave school and find employment in a uh, blacking factory. Mm. And his father was sent to the debtor's prison in uh, Marshall Sea. And these were happenings that left a deep scar in his mind, in Dickens's mind. Hmm. And he never forget the humiliation of sinking into the working class so suddenly or the betrayal of being left to fend for himself. So initially, when his father was there as a clerk, he was a middle class person in a way. Suddenly from middle class, he went to or he dipped down to a working class people. And this really <clears throat> uh, left a kind of scar that was indelible indelible in future mm, for uh, Dickens. Mm. And uh, the deep sympathy of the child in the protest against social injustices that we find in his work were born out of his childhood trauma. So he was in trauma, he was under trauma when this incident took place, when his father died in a way. Mm. Okay.
after a few months you see however john dickens <coughs> john dickens his father was released and the young charles was able to resume schooling he started work in a law firm as clerk became a legal reporter and subsequently due to his skill in shorthand a newspaper reporter of parliamentary proceedings as a journalist he wrote a number of short descriptive sketches of city life which were so popular that they were collected into uh, a book that is sketches by boz sketches by boz is one of the most important uh, uh, one of the most important works of uh, dickens hmm. sketches by boz hmm. published in 1843 okay so boz was the pen name adopted by dickens so what is the pen name by the way boz boz hmm boz hmm भाविल <coughs> 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 तो मु जो जो माने पोम गुडा को लिखी भी किछ भी वर्क लिखी भी मोना दे दी डेविल होली हला मोना एक्चुअली डेविल नो बुझो जे व्हाई व्हाई डू आई मीन पोएट डू दिस और राइटर्स डू दिस बाय द वे टू हाइड देयर आइडेंटिटी हम्म हम्म व्हाई डू यू नीड टू हाइड योर आइडेंटिटी व्हेन यू आर राइटिंग यू यू नीड टू बी प्राउड ऑफ योरसेल्फ राइट आरती Uh, sir, uh, in that case, from my point, in from my point of view, since he was uh, in the support of uh, democracy and in, in against of um, uh, the French Revolution, I mean, um, mm-hmm. uh, industrial revolution, uh, industrialization. So he wants to keep himself uh, secure and use his pen name. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. So you see, you will find out that many of the feminist writers also used to have their pen name because at the point of time, society did not allow the women to write. Hmm. Like presently, Charles Dickens was uh, completely against this industrial revolution or the ideals of industrial revolution. That's why. uh you see he wanted to write initially in the pen name of a boss hmm okay so his first novel was the immensely popular comic novel pickwick papers pickwick papers is also one of the important works hmm we can say this is pickwick pickwick papers hmm and it was originally intended to serve merely as the text to accompany the sporting plates of the famous artist hmm right simo but uh, due to the former's death dickens went on to write it as his own book hmm and dickens's success was as a novelist after this was swift he wrote oliver twist the old curiosity shop nicholas nickleby almost simultaneously between 1837 and 1841 and in these early novels dickens attacked various contemporary social evils and called for their reform hmm <clears throat> okay now i am going to show you the image of the guillotine hmm i am sending you the image of the guillotine here hmm so guillotine means the machine which mm-hmm. cuts people's heads Mm, yeah, yeah, that one I am going to send you. Mm. So it was much used during the French Revolution. Whoever used to protest, mm, he used to be, I mean, <clears throat> execution uh, executioned with this kind of a machine. Mm. This was really harsh, by the way. Mm. 
okay in your group i am sending you hmm. okay just have a look at your in, in your group have a look at the image hmm. this is the guillotine the pronunciation is guillotine hmm. what is that guillotine guillotine okay guillotine all right how do you pronounce this guillotine guillotine or and teen is longer one guillotine okay like this way g la in bujhela lekhi dikhe dekho kemdi pronounce koribo ha spelling nu no eta hmm eta pronunciation g la teen guillotine hala okay <clears throat> so <clears throat> so here we have a tale of two cities it was published in uh, uh, later on I mean, just after 1841, in 1842, he visited America with his wife, that is Catherine Hogarth, in 1836. And in American notes, you you will find out that uh, this American notes was based on this visit. And the novels of his middle period were Martin Chuzzlewit, then the Christmas books, including Christmas Carol, Dombey and Sons, and the autobiographical David Copperfield. Hmm. Dickens's greatest novels were written. arguably in the decade that followed like bleak house hard times and little dorrit are like his last novels hmm. so this this works are quite important by the way hmm. you need to remember this one hmm. this this one this three ones huh. then we have this two ones here this twos okay Hmm. And you see, in hard times also, uh, you will find out the explanation of the effects of industrial revolution in great expectations. You see, you will find a character that is Pip, and Pip, Pip's perception. Ye on kori chhi. Subhasri, Subhasri pani pi pi puru chundi. Boliya. नहीं हम्म ग्रुप ग्रुप ओके ओके so in uh, you see in great expectations you have the character that is pip and everything has been uh, reported from the from the perspective of the character that is pip huh. okay then you see in this novels dickens is no longer attacking specific social ills by the way but is dealing with the issue of the condition of england in general through his satiric representation of such national institutions as the court of chancery the circumlocution office the factory system the class system the great financial schemes and money systems and middle class philistinism and jingoism you see you have these two words hmm. philistinism and jingoism okay so a philistine person is a person who is lacking uh, in or hostile or smugly indifferent to culture to cultural values and all hmm. that is a philistine person hmm. okay hmm. philistine okay all right so a philistine is a person who is lacking in or hostile or smugly indifferent to cultural values intellectual pursuits aesthetic refinement and all hmm you have also <clears throat> this word that is jingoism jingoism the meaning of which is uh, extreme patriotism like bharat mata ki jai bujhi pal no in the form of aggression sir hmm okay. patriotism in the form of aggression hmm 
extreme so the extreme ko na extreme patriotism hmm. okay so extreme or aggressive patriotism we can write extreme or aggressive patriotism hala gemdi dem gemdi tumme ko jo thik ho bharat mata ki jaye hala kichhi matlab nahi bharat mata ki jaye ho ए तमे कहा को बाध्य करि परिबनी बाध्य कहो न होले मारिब मारिब मामे बोली करि परिबनी नहीं सेमती कहिले भारत माता के जय केमती हो भारत माता के जय हो तो सेतरे हो बगी <laughs> भारत माता के जय केमती हो व्हेन यू रेस्पेक्ट द राइट्स ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल फंडामेंटल राइट्स एंड राइट टू लाइफ इफ यू आर डिनाइंग हिज राइट as a citizen of india if he does not say this statement then you are encroaching upon his rights and that is legally offensible so you are you should be legally trialed for doing this by the way that is jingoism so jingoism is extreme or aggressive form of nationalism or patriotism hmm. okay so at that point of time you see uh, the whole of europe was reeling under philistinism and jingoism okay And in 1859, he wrote a tale of two cities, going back to the 18th century, for his matter. In the 1850s, Dickens was also editor success successively of two immensely successful magazines, and he was at the height of his success and had become a man of great wealth and fame later on. Hmm. And in 1858, he began to give public readings from his books, which were very popular, by the way. And, and but they proved to be a great physical strain, and he died. following his stroke in 1870 so in 1870 he would he died because of a heart attack hmm okay now a tale of two two cities uh, you have the background and this background is all about you see when in 1832 queen victoria uh, introduced reform bills in the parliament and later on uh, in 1867 this was again uh, being uh, reformed then this period of dickens literary production uh, really influenced the others and also this reform bills also influenced dickens's uh, approach to dealing with literature and the reform bills gave franchise to working class men in response to movements like chartism which made demands for greater democratic participation in the government and a number of other legislations were enacted in such areas as factory reform wages education public health divorce and inheritance for women trade and agriculture and the success in achieving uh, reform measures in england was directly related to revolutionary movements in the rest of europe particularly france and dickens was an active campaigner for reform arguing like many other victorian thinkers that this was the only way of staving off violent social upheavals like revolutions this connection will be discussed in greater detail uh, here in the tale of two cities and the victorian age especially after the 1850s was also an age of progress it was a period of rapid industrialization imperial expansion and also population increase that we talked about uh, in the last class i mean in the in the in the history's class hmm. all of all, all of which led to uh, overall material prosperity and also the resulting feeling of nationalistic pride could often sound complacent and jingoistic as i told you now so therefore many of the writers of the time like thomas carlyle ruskin hmm, uh, charles dickens hmm, morris directed their social criticism towards the materialism the continuing economic and social disparities the philistinism and the aggressive temper of the age though at the same time these writers often shared the contemporary belief in progress hmm okay dickens was a recorder of the victorian age both celebrating and criticizing it this double attitude is well exemplified in his description of the coming of the railways in dombey and son he views it both as a sign of progress as well as a threat posed by change similarly in a tale of two cities he says it was the best of times it was the worst of times this is one of the lines by the way hmm. so in tale of two cities he says this lines this line this line is quite important hmm. have a look 
it was the best of times it was the worst of times this is a contradictory kind of statement self contradictory statement right so that's how it is paradoxical in nature hmm. <clears throat> and moving on to the other aspects of the tale of two cities so dickens a uh, portrayal of women we will talk about this so the chief women or characters in the tale of two cities this they follow a pattern that is set in many of his other novels as well so dickens heroines are not among his major character creations he both used and constructed the victorian st st stereotype of the woman as the angel in the house okay what do you mean by a stereotype by the way <clears throat> stereotype was traditional idea mm -hmm. mindset of traditional way hmm. yes for example hame kon ko ki hame ko normally bahare ko hante lok mane ki odia lok mane bahut lazy bahut alas ba boli sat ko tha bhi gudi hisab re hala ame din re bhi soiba रात भी शोबा नुह आम पाखे किसी कामधाम ना बस खाइबा तीन तीन थर चार चार थर पखा खाइबा ना मान मु गाँ ग कथा कौच रहा कथा कहूनी सेमती बाहर गोटे परसेपन अच्छी है मैं ओडा बाहर आम निजक निज तो भल कह जमी बाहर लोक मैंने कहते कौन ओडिया पीपल आर क्वैट लेजी तो जो बड़े मुझे एन यू रे भी थी पढ़ु थी जवाहरलाल नेहरू यूनिवर्सीटी रे दिल्ली रे से समय रे मोर मान प्रोफेसर से निजे कहते पीतांबर जी आप इतना काम कैसे कर लेते हैं ओडिया लोग तो बहुत लेजी होते हैं बुझ पार दिस इज टीजो टाइप ओके आम कौन कहू बिहारी लोक मैंने चोर मैंने नर्माली लोक मैंने कहते जो जगह कौन सी असुविधा है कहे बिहारी लोक मैंने चोर से ही नहीं थो बिहारी लोकटा ही नहीं थी भावे जमी अमेरिकन मैंने कौन भावती ब्लाक आफ्रिकन जो मैंने था जो मैंने ब्लाक आफ्रिकन आमेरिकन मैंने से चोर बोली भावती सब जगह है कि गोटे क्राइम है हाँ से आफ्रिकन कर आफ्रिकन आमेरिकन टा कर स्टीरियो टाइप ओके ओके सो 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 दिस हिरोइन अफ डिकेन दे आर of victorian stereotypes what the point so these heroines that dickens has in his uh, novels in his works they are of victorian stereotypical ideologies okay <clears throat> so for example we have a description of a woman in this uh, in one of his works as angel in the house so angels are normally residing in the heaven this is a popular belief we are not saying this is true right or we are not saying this is truth so angels normally dwell in heavens right but here a particular heroine is addressed as angel in the house which is quite derogatory uh, remark for a woman right such a woman is above all a good homemaker homemaker a good wife daughter and mother always patient submissive and acceptably feminine what the point so angel in the house means for example a woman or a girl hmm as a girlfriend for example as a homemaker as a good wife a daughter mother always submissive and acceptably feminine right and the figure of agnes in Agnes in David Copperfield is a well-known example of such a heroine. Got the point? Florence Dombey in Dombey and Son is also that kind of a heroine. Esther Summerson in Bleak House is also that kind of a heroine. Amy Dorrit in Little Dorrit. So these are popular examples of Victorian stereotypical heroines presented by Charles Dickens in his works. Okay. Thus, Lucy Manette here in Tale of Two Cities. is the heroine right we have talked about lucy manet always uh, already and she may be viewed as a typical dickens heroine having all this stereotypical values of victorian age and she is deprecatingly uh, described in the novel itself 
as a golden haired doll why should a woman be addressed as a doll d o l l doll kondhei ko na me gelo re nai kondhei ane chot so aman ko ame jio man ko kondhei boli ko right but this is patriarchal so the very phrase that we are using is patriarchal in nature why should a woman or a girl be addressed as a doll golden haired doll e jagah ne hala ei jagah re ame golden haired doll boli ko je ka ko ote heroine ke lucy manet ko hala to ame jodi dekhiba feminist perspective ru ya ko ta hale ame jani pariba ki e jin sota patriarchal hmm in nature in contrast and often in opposition to the fair heroine there is also in many dickens novels the dark woman who is quite passionate vengeful and troublesome and she is outside the pale of the domestic and outsider a criminal a woman with a past or a foreigner hmm defarge in a tale of two cities is based on this type but she is also breaking some kinds of in, uh, significant ways uh, from dickens other dark women and what distinguishes mme uh, defarge is her commitment to the revolutionary cause hmm so defarge is as we shall see a highly talented woman whose outstanding intellectual abilities and organizational skills make her the natural leader among the masses of saint antoine and dickens it would seem is actually afraid of her commitment and her abilities so dickens had consistently disapproved of work oriented anti domestic women but the school teacher miss blimber dombey and son or the professional philanthropist Mrs. Jell Jellyby hmm. in Bleak House are the only ones clearly satirized in a tale of two cities. On the other hand, the threat that M. M. E. Defarge poses not just to domesticity but also to the larger social. Next class, we'll be talking about theme of burial and resurrection. Just uh, remind me about this. Ah. the themes we will be dealing with the themes hmm. and also other aspects of this novel okay this is the introduction we are dealing with hmm okay any questions you have any questions <clears throat> हम्म पूजा निलिप्ता शुभश्री शुभम आरती जस्मी रानी सुस्मिता सर एज पर द हीरो ऑफ द हीरो ऑफ द नोवेल हु हुम शुड वी कंसीडर द हीरो इन दिस बिकॉज़ आई हैव बिकॉज़ आई हैव रीड द नोवेल एंड फ्रॉम माय पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू द वन सिडनी कार्टून Mm. is the hero but mm. uh, you said the main important character was uh, mm. <coughs> uh, mr jervis lorry mm. so who is the hero of the characters uh, novel sir so uh, we will see about this because we have the characterization as well mm. so we may not conclude now for the time being okay we will read this and after this we will decide which one is the I mean, protagonist here. Main characters might be two, three, four. Okay, but uh, we, you see, I wouldn't say even uh, Jarvis as uh, the main character. I said Jarvis, right? Hmm? Which one? I, yeah. So we have Doctor Edward Manet one, right? We have also I told you uh, Lucy, right? and also we have we have the another one lucy's uh jarvis lorry right we have jarvis lorry we have lucy and we have also dr edward edward manet right and the the focus is on lucy also right and also on jarvis and along with this another important character is edward manet so we will see uh 
on which character exactly the focus is on right then we will decide hmm, which character is the protagonist of it we have three important main characters hmm. all right yes sir hmm. so we cannot say now because we are going to deal with this hmm, in a detailed way all right okay any other question All right, then. Do you have any other class now at 7 o'clock? Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, how many classes do you have per day online? Three classes. Three classes. Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Hmm. All right, then. Ah, see you in the next from me. Yes, uh, yes. Since we don't have a, we didn't have a um, formal introduction uh, uh, class. So can we do it now? Yeah, why not? If you have time. <laughs> Sir, we have two minutes and I think okay. that is enough for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, then sir, please take the honor. Monday. Arati, introduce yourself. Sir, first you please take the honor. Please, sir. <laughs> I am Pitambar Bera, that's all. And I'm your friend. <laughs> okay, sir. Sir, uh, I was wondering in which college you are now in a faculty of... Now I am in government college, Sundargarh. Hmm. Okay, so thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, and we are appointed by Odisha Public Service Commission as Odisha Education Service Group One officers, gazetted officers. Hmm. Okay, this is all. Uh, I'll send you my CV in the group, right? Because it will take around fifteen minutes to twenty minutes to introduce myself. That's why I'm not introducing yes, myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so you right now, Arati. Hmm. Sir, so myself, Arati Vashnik. Now I am uh, working under the postal department. Mm -hmm. You can make your video on when you are introducing yourself so that I can see you and everybody can also see it. Now, I am not going to see you. I am not going to see you. Hello, sir. Uh, myself, Arthi Patnaik, and I'm a postal department, and I'm uh, doing my graduation from ITO. Hmm. So you are, uh, huh? Postal department, a kamgoor, chana. Hmm. Yes, sir. Next, Banishri Muni. Bani, are you there? Bunny, are you left? My do something came to you. Just me, Rani, just me, money. Sorry, just me, money. Just me, money. Arati, the McCoy introduction. Call you, I will leave the call again. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Nilipta. Okay, yes, sir. she is having problems, yeah, network issue probably. Okay, Nilipta, introduce yes, yourself. Hmm. I am Nilipta Oja. Mm -hmm. I am basically from Bhadrak, uh, but currently staying in Kotak. Mm -hmm. I have completed my 12 uh, plus 2 from Bhadrak uh, Junior College. Mm -hmm. uh, I also complete, I have completed my uh, diploma in elementary education mm -hmm. from RNT Kotak. Mm -hmm. So I am doing graduation in Igno. Cool. Next we have uh, Puja Behera. Puja. Hi sir. My name is Puspanjali Behera. Nickname is Puja. I am from mm -hmm. Balunga, Khodda. I have That's completed sir. plus two, and then completed DLD course. Then mm -hmm. I am joining Igno. In English, that's all, sir. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Great. We have uh, Raja Kumari Kundu. <clears throat> Raj Kumari. So, 
शुभम साहू शुभम ओके सो हियर वी हैव शुभम ऑल राइट हाँ कहो आवाज आस सुस्मिता Yes, sir. I'm Sushmita Kumari Sahu from Baluga. I've completed my plus two in Baluga College, then completed DLD course, and doing my graduation in IGNO. Okay, great. DLD course, माने कोटा कोटो? Diploma in Elementary City City थी ला अबे DLD है. अच्छा अच्छा हाँ 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 अच्छा अच्छा ओके great. Okay, I have also completed my bachelor in education. in english language teaching so i am also a trained teacher hmm okay hmm cool so you can uh, join your next class uh, and we are having our next class tomorrow hmm not not tomorrow the day after tomorrow sorry okay at uh, the same time around 5 o'clock okay all right then bye bye see you in the next class thank you sir thank you sir bye
सुबह सुबह कल तुम सार नहली हेलो हेलो सुबह हाँ हेलो हाँ कुआड़ पड़ी थी लोग मुझे सपड़े यूट्यूब देखो जी आड़े चाल ची आ इस साथ तो बंदे ये कोई जाए चंदो रिकॉर्डिंग चल ची क्लास हम्म अम्म दिजन खाली चले लैपटॉप जा लैपटॉप पांच चंद जगिया पांच चंद जगिया सॉरी सॉरी 